The man of your dreams is back. Here's your relook at the NECA Toys A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 Freddy's Revenge Ultimate Freddy Krueger. It's been five years since Freddy Krueger tormented those helpless Elm Street teens with his razor glove and maniacal sense of humor, but he's back for revenge with his sights set on another innocent victim he can torture and possess. Time for another hellish helping of Freddy Krueger, this time coming to us from A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. A personal favorite, I have to admit, of mine. Not one I liked when I was younger growing up and watching these in high school, but certainly as I got a little bit older and I had more appreciation for what Part 2 represented. Yes, it was drastic, and yes, it certainly did break the rules of Elm Street, but it still is a fine film to watch if you enjoy possession and something. It felt more like an Amityville film before it actually felt like a nightmare on Elm Street. Maybe that's why I like it so much. Anyways, I'm talking all about other stuff. For the height of Freddy Krueger, specifically from part two, you're looking at the figure standing 7.4 inches in height. And that, in centimeters, works out to be 18.9, almost 19 centimeters tall. Get ourselves some size comparisons going on. Here's part one Freddy Krueger. I'm going to bring in all ultimate figures because they, of course, stay to the consistent trend of having articulation from their lower half. There is Freddy Krueger from part one. And then a follow-up, and of course going back and rectifying the events of Part 2, here's Freddy Krueger from Part 3. Um, the thing about Part 3 is, specifically with this particular Freddy Krueger, is he does have that torso swap piece. So it does make his torso appear to be a little bit more boxier. But you can see how the figures are still sort of consistent with one another. Their shoes seem the same. Their pants seem somewhat the same, although the first one does seem a little bit different. But they are all nice figures to have. And I like the fact that NECA continued, at this point, to continue to release A Nightmare on Elm Street figures. I hope the trend will still continue, because while we certainly have gotten like the main versions of Freddy, there are still a lot of Freddies I feel to tackle. Fred Krueger, for example, we just recently looked at Freddy's dead version of Fred Krueger, the Springwood Slasher. And then, of course, there was also the uh, Dream Child Freddy that we also had to look at with the elongated arm and that very gnarly looking foot. So I do feel like there's still territory for NECA to cover if they ever decide to go back and finish off and kind of continue on with the Elm Street figures that we've gotten already. Looking at the accessories that come included with Freddy Krueger, he gets not one, but a pair of demon dogs. They're not identical, obviously, as you can see, they share different head sculpts altogether. Ironically, when they were speaking with the artist responsible for making the demon dogs, he himself admitted that he felt like he just rushed through the job because he was working on another project. I think that project was the Alien's Queen. So obviously, could, you could tell that he was a little bit more dedicated to that and not necessarily the demon dogs. I personally liked the dogs in the film. I thought they were scary enough. And while it may have looked like a prosthetic mask, it still was, I felt, a pretty effective look. Speaking of the dog, though, if at least the body seems somewhat familiar to you, you can also compare the two to the accessory dog, the dog that came with the Alien 3 accessory set. While the head is definitely very different, this one bears more the resemblance of a real dog, the bodies are identical to one another. The collar is different only because the collar is attached to the head, for example, so when you are removing for in this case, the head, the collar is going to go along with it, so it didn't have to be the exact same shared appliance. But if you look at the two, I mean, other than really the color being slightly a little bit more vibrant, ironically enough, more on the Freddy's accessories than the one that we had gotten with the Alien 3. I believe the Alien 3 came later on, but the colors are a little bit more vibrant on the demon dogs versus the regular dog that came from Alien 3. It's just interesting, the fact that, obviously, if they can make use of the same mold, why not? Bring those out if you, if you can, if you have them at your disposal. But really nice overall like looking pieces. I mean, obviously not this one right here, but the Demon Dogs are nice overall looking pieces. Uh, some nice disgusting decay on this particular face of the Demon Dog. 
Maybe the fact it does have like an artificial look in the film sort of adds to the offsetting nature of the way that they look on the film. I thought they looked pretty cool, personally. The dogs are different from one another, while the bodies are pretty much identical to one another and share the exact same paint scheme. The heads most definitely are different from one another. I like this one, I think, more than this one right here. This one has a more screaming face, a little bit of decay or grossness up at the top corner, and very nicely painted, both of them, by NECA Toys. They have some articulation, not much. It's just basically a head articulated via ball joints, so the head moves up and down, and you can also rotate it all the way around. I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't that kill the dog? Well, they're demon dogs anyways. I don't think twisting the head all the way around would kill them. It would just really anger them more than anything else. There is a cut right here dividing the front to the back of the body. There is actually no articulation right there. It's just basically the way that they've assembled it. I'm not really sure why this wasn't just all one mold. It would have made more sense, at least to me. But uh, it does look like they were assembled as two pieces put together to make one gruesome whole. So those are the dogs. I like those, the fact that they were included. It really wasn't something I was expecting. If somebody had told me a long time ago we were going to be getting ourselves an ultimate Freddy Krueger, of course, with the new articulation, I would have been fine just with some alternate heads, a hand, and of course his fedora. The demon dogs was a nice surprise back then, and certainly still to this day, even though now we obviously know that they were included. Speaking of included, Freddy Krueger also comes with his trusty fedora. It's done in a soft plastic, which is basically by this point the same hat we've gotten with a lot of the Freddies. For example, if we bring in part three Freddy, you can see if you look at the two, Okay, they're not 100% correct. This one does seem a little bit larger. Now I feel like a fibber face. Technically, though, that is true. Part 2's Freddy was a more mangled-looking fedora. It got a little bit more streamlined later on. A little bit smaller also in design. So while, yes, it doesn't share the exact same mold, it has the same similar makeup. Very soft and plastic. And it's been painted in a real nice chestnut brown. It fits over his head, as it should certainly fit over top of Freddy's head. I'll show you guys that also in a second as well. He does come with also the finger blade hand, which is a nice touch. Uh, it's obviously to go without saying that every time you get these things out of the packaging, their fingers are always warped, whether it be the gloved hand or, in this case, Freddy's gruesome-looking finger blade hand. Uh, all of these blades tend to be a little warped. I mean, you can take a little bit of hot water, manipulate that, get that back into the way that you want to have it look. I probably would have these, this one at least, straightened out. You gotta be careful still that it's soft plastic. Don't get too crazy with trying to force these. But if you heat them in hot water, you can usually just kind of pry these back to the straight way that you want them and then just let that cool off. And providing you don't warp it again, the hand should be pretty much okay. So nice detailing done to the hand itself. You've got the scarring that would be featured, of course, all across Freddy's body. We only really see it from the neck up and, of course, his hands. The hand, it looks really, really cool. A lot of times when it comes to displaying certain Freddies, I like to display them, of course, as I picture them the most iconic in that film. So that being said, a lot of times, if it comes to displaying Part 2 Freddy, I'm more inclined to move towards displaying him with the fingered hand, like this one here, for example, rather than the gloved hand. And that's just my own personal preference. If you do want to swap the hand out, though, let me just show you how that's done. First, we'll look at the gloved hand. Ooh, yeah, that one's got a little warped as well. Uh, it's not too bad, technically. Again, just a little bit of hot water. I could probably man manipulate those blades, get them straight again. It's a nice looking glove when you think of how small that actually is. Some nice discoloration done to it. You've got, of course, the bronze colored finger plates with a more copper color front uh, pad or the front glove main part of the forehand, I guess, this top piece right here. It's the plate that just covers across the top of the glove. I don't know why I had such a struggle time to actually describe that. On the underside of the glove, nice to see that they actually went the full effect of displaying and painting the open area of his palm, as well as the fingers in the open slots of his glove. And it's nice done, I mean, again, for how small that actually is. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and pop that off, just remove it from the ball joint, could be any bit easier than that, and swap it out with, again, my preferred method of displaying Freddy. We're just going to go ahead and pop this on. A little bit of wiggling is really all that's required, and then you just get that over top of the ball joint, just like so. 
Unfortunately, one d downside, the way that they've painted it, the forearm isn't quite the same color as the hand. Now, to be fair, you're really probably going to be looking at it from this way, but with the slight discoloration being kind of a divide between the end of the sleeve and the rest of the hand, it does look like he's sort of wearing a skin glove. Isn't that gruesome? But at least, again, it's nice the fact that you would get such an accessory to come include with the figure. Again, I would be fine the fact that if they would just display him, if carried him just with a release of the glove. But it's like I like the fact, again, that they include him with the actual uh, finger blade hand. I don't really know the best way to describe that. Really long fingers. There you go. Uh, other accessories, of course, can come then down to the alternate head sculpts. Now, I started the review with this one. This is normally the way that I display the figure, at least in the past I have. I can take the fedora and put that over top of his head. It's an overall a nice look to the figure itself. But he does have, of course, ver various different options. He has this one right here, which, of course, Freddy is the brains of the operation. We've got special work to do, you and I. Uh, this one does have the ripped away top section of his head. Jesse, you are the body and I am the brains. This fur, of course, for the purpose of displaying the figure, you don't want to really go with the fedora. So instead, we'll just wiggle the head off the ball joint, a little bit tighter in this case. And then we're just going to pop the head, the new head back in place. Now, again, if you have any difficulty, what I could certainly recommend that you do is you can heat the head just to loosen up the area of the sockets. When you run the peg straight through, you're not going to have as much the struggle as probably what I'm looking like I'm doing right now. Anyways, that's what the head sculpt looks like. You really would want to be able to pull off the full effect, but because he doesn't have a double hinge on the elbow, you can't quite make it look like he's actually peeling back the top of his head. But still, it's really nicely sculpted if you're all about brains. This really has some nice touches to it. It isn't quite the same coloring as the rest of his flesh, but like in the film, the brain is pretty much around the same color as the rest of his skin. So it's pretty accurate the way that they've done that. I really like that face sculpt quite a bit. If you prefer to have your Freddy a little bit more to the way he looks in the end of the film, with a somewhat ridiculous, non-plausible way of him being defeated. Nonetheless, though, you can also pop this head sculpt on. And this is kind of looking like Freddy's starting to melt. Really effective the way they did that, even in special effects. Again, you can put the head sculpt, the hat on if you wanted to. I kind of like just to display it without the hat. And again, a really nice looking head sculpt. It would have been even cooler, or hotter in this case, if NECA had incorporated a fourth head sculpt with the skin was completely peeling and melting off of his face. But we sort of start getting it, at least in this head sculpt right here. You can see there's anguish in Freddy's head. I really like how this eye looks to be lingering off to the side. It's a really, again, gruesome looking head sculpt. When it's all said and done, usually a lot of times I'll just display it with this head sculpt right here. And that's just my preferred look, at least for myself, at least. I'm going to go ahead and pop the head off, just like that. I've been doing a lot of head swapping in this review so far. I'm sure that's probably going to be the end of it. I might maybe change it out at the end for final looks. Just stay tuned if that's the case. And then he comes with one other accessory. Now, at the time, I'm going to move these demon dogs out of the way. No, that's not what I was going to say. But at the time that I first had a look at this figure, I did comment the problem plaguing with this following accessory. He does come with the flames. This is the flame, of course, in the film where he's standing in front of the flames and he says, you are all, God, you are all of my children. But unfortunately, I get why they wanted to make this as an appliance that you could attach to his back. It's really by magnets. And I have to admit, it doesn't stay on very well at all, as you can see right there. There is a magnet in the top of his torso that really then goes to the magnet that's on the back, or it probably is just a metal plate here, a magnet on the back. I feel like this magnet is way too small. And because of that, because it is so small, I feel like it's not a strong enough attraction. And a result of that is this flame attachment never, never stays in place. Even I've gone down to my collection area to find this flame, sort of just always laying to the side of Freddy. When I think I've got it in a good enough place, it falls off yet again. I'm surprised actually even right now while I'm going back and re, there we go, re-reviewing this, I'm surprised that that flame was staying in place as well as it was. Uh, I guess I could have probably used a larger magnet 
if they used a big large plate of magnets or if they had brought the flame a little higher up so there was more of a flat surface maybe that would have worked a little bit better to attach that to Freddy's torso as it goes right now it stays but then it falls off the best thing to probably do is put your figure down on a shelf put the flame on as quickly as you can and then just walk away and hope and pray that it stays on him you could also sort of cheat the system, and I suppose you could probably just glue that in place. That would be a big no-no. Or you could use like a clear elastic sort of to help brace and hold it in place. Again, I like the fact that they would incorporate it, but I think when it's all said and done, I might find myself even regretting saying this, but maybe if they had done away with some of the demon dogs, or at least gotten rid of all of them, both of them all together, and they had just given us a display base something that had a molded fire behind it it wouldn't have to be very big at all it could be maybe about this big just a little platform that you could have had flames on the back of it and you simply would just stand your freddy in front of it i'm not sure if i would have actually preferred that or i'm happy the fact that we did get the demon dogs you guys can let me know down below in the comments section but yeah, this is about the only thing that, I didn't mean to startle you. This is about the only thing that's really disappointing on this particular figure is the way that this flame just doesn't stay in place. It has good intentions, but it really just doesn't stay in place as well as it should. And I think just using that one little magnet, I don't think is nearly enough to hold it in place. Just again, when you think you have it, it's going to fall off. I just feel like it's going to fall off. I'm just going to take it off. Nice detailing done when it's all said and done for the flame. I just realized I rhymed there. It's made of translucent orange plastic, slightly more orange or lighter orange down below, airbrushed, and then as it gets to the top, it gets a little bit more darker in flames. It's got some nice sculpting to it. Again, just not the most effective way of attaching it to the figure. For Freddy's articulation, let's go ahead and look at that right now. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down, and it also can rock back and forth, whatever head you decide to go with. Arms also rotate all the way around with ease, no issues there. He does have a bend at the elbow, bending roughly at about a 45-degree angle, not quite a 90-degree angle. Uh, he does have the hand rotation, whatever hand you decide to go with, and because the elbow is pinned the way that it is, also allows the forearm to rotate all the way around with ease. He has an upper torso ball joint. Uh, one of the downsides for some of the ultimate figures, at least for Freddy's at least, is I've noticed that they get loose when it comes to the tops of their legs. The knees aren't never really the issue. I have still full tight joints happening on pretty much all my Freddy's, but they have developed a little bit of a loose syndrome. You could probably rectify this. Uh, I think just by the way, it looks like it's probably just been, of course your hinge joint is right there and it's been plugged right there you probably could force that off and a little bit of glue to the joint and that might thicken things up so that Freddy isn't so wobbly in the legs. Either way though, his legs do split out on both sides. This one leg has always really been stiff for me, but you at least get a full splits on Freddy if of course this one would be a little bit more forthcoming. Forward and back on the legs, he does have a bend at the knee, which also rotates the lower leg. And Freddy does have articulation, hinging up and down and rock back and forth on the ankles. A nice looking Freddy based on a film I know most people don't tend to care for. Uh, there's always, for me at least, those sequels of these horror films that most people tend not to like. And I somehow end up liking Halloween Part 6, Halloween Part 3, uh, Friday the 13th Part 5, not revered by many. And of course, part two, uh, Freddy's Revenge. I like, again, Freddy, Freddy's Revenge. I like the aspect of him possessing the child. And while Jesse being possessed, of course, leads down the road of people being more suggestive of that particular sequel, the idea of him possessing a person was something that made part two very unique. Uh, in a way, though, it did defy the idea of what the rules were in place for a Nightmare on Elm Street film. Having Freddy jumping into the real world didn't really make much sense at all. Certainly, at least the way that they did it. That being said, though, it's still a favorite of mine, one of which I like to go back from time to time. And based on that film, I think Necatoys did a really great job on 
Freddy's Revenge Freddy. Yes, he doesn't have really the easiest of times holding the flame to attach to the back of his torso, but at least he does have some pretty cool personality to him, and he does have the terror dogs, the demon dogs, not to be confused with the Ghostbusters terror dogs. These are nice little added accessories. Could they have gone away with these instead in favor of maybe just, again, something with flames in the background? Possibly, yes. But he's still a nice-looking figure when it's all said and done, and it's nice that I actually have him on display with the rest of my other Ultimate Freddy Krueger figures. Admittingly, in final looks, it looks probably a little bit ridiculous, the fact that Freddy Krueger looks like he's trying to peel away the layers of his skin. Because he doesn't have the much-needed double hinge in his elbow, you can't quite pull it off, and it results in him more or less looking like he's angry that somebody has stolen his fedora. Freddy Krueger, I've jumped back and forth uh, displaying this guy in a couple of different poses and looks because he does have the benefits of three pretty cool interchangeable heads. means a lot of times when I'm going back and updating my collection, I may go back and change and tweak my existing Freddies. This one seems to get changed a lot. Sometimes I change and display him with the demon dogs. Other times I display him like this with his levitating invisible fedora and then other times I have him in his melting skin face which have the three interchangeable head sculpts admittingly that's the, my least favorite but I like the fact that they would have included it I would have even turned that dial full and probably had a completely melted head sculpt like they have them in the film but it's still nice that NECA would include that in the first place the demon dogs are a nice inclusion, which again would make reappearances later on in the Alien 3 accessory set. I'm wondering what else they could probably get out of that existing mold. The bang for your buck, if you will. Perhaps they could come up with man's best friend. I'm trying to think of what other... Cujo could not have used that body, because Cujo would be much bigger, but maybe man's best friend. How's that for a big, a bit of a throwback to an older film? Has anybody seen man's best friend? Lance Henriksen. It's not a very good film at all. But either way, going back to Freddy, I do like the fact that he does have the accessories of the demon dogs. The only thing, again, going back to this guy a second go around, is it still is disappointing that the flame attachment doesn't really work the greatest. Because the magnet is so small, or perhaps there's not enough metal in the back of Freddy's back, whatever the answer to that question may be, the flame just doesn't stay in place the way that it should. And a lot of times I usually consider just displaying Freddy Krueger without sans le flames, or if I was going to be attaching it to his torso, I might just consider the idea of using clear elastics. Yes, from the front of his torso, you would see the clear elastics. I guess you probably could even use Velcro, but we don't want to start tampering with the sculpt that NECA puts into their piece. A lot of times, like I said, I'll just display him without the flames. What do you guys think of this figure? You probably have already added this one to your collection. If you're a fan of Freddy, and if you haven't, based on this review and this review alone, what do you guys think of the NECA toys, A Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy's Revenge, Ultimate Freddy? Man, I wish he could have had a double hinge on the elbow. But nonetheless, say la vie. If you guys are new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on and stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of reviews coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.